I teach writing and I teach uh, literature and so for me it's a lot of discussion right um, when I teach a, a short story there's not a black and white answer to it you know um, so when you're looking at symbolism for example I don't want to tell them what I think the symbol means I want them to talk about what they think it means and arrive at a number of different possible conclusions and so uh, that what that means is I need them to be interacting with each other on, on a consistent basis. And so if I don't say you, you need to be, so you know, on there, uh, you know, by Monday make your first post, make another post by Wednesday, make another post by Friday, um, then they might, my experience has been they wait until the end of the week, <laughs> Friday, they make their three posts and then they're done and then there's no discussion, they're not reading each other's posts. So um, if I wanna have any kind of authentic and meaningful growth um, they need to they need to have that laid out for them um, and they might you know other professors might requ not require any kind of discussion like that they might not need that back and forth I think all professors should be requiring some kind of discussion um, but I feel like in a literature course in particular it has to be like a lot of back and forth um, so I tell them it's in the course information sheet, which I give to them, and it's downloadable, um, so they can print it out. I have it uh, in a, a small chunk of text in the course overview. This is how many times you need to log in on what days. Um, I have a, um, a, a course quiz that they take during orientation week to make sure that they understand, and they can take the quiz as many times as they need to until they get the answer right, that they know that they need to um, log in that many days per week. When I first started teaching, so I teach a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class face-to-face, -face, so I had three discussions in that class. So I thought, well, I'll mimic that in an online class. I'll have a discussion that's Monday, a discussion that's Wednesday, and a discussion that's Friday, and the students will have to log in and engage in each discussion. Um, but because it's very different than gathering all the students in one classroom for 50 minutes where they can discuss together, it it was not working and students were really, um, some students get on and, and will put 15 posts in a 50 minute period and other students you get, you know, they're on for three minutes and they'll post. They have different commitments and so I think what has worked much better for me is giving them one discussion per week with a, a set number of posts that they need to make and how many, how many times they have to log in over the course of the week. And that gives them time to sit back and reflect and it also allows students with differing schedules to uh, log in um, and and talk about what they want to talk about. The other the other pitfall I think is if the professor gets nervous that a discussion isn't going well and, and there's a tendency that we want to jump in and, and get it going, I think you have to be very careful not to take over the discussion as the professor. I mean really monitor yourself and balance it out and, and give your students the space and time to reflect on what they want to post and what their classmates have said before you, you jump in and try to make it happen. What happens a lot in the, anybody who has engaged in any kind of virtual environment knows that uh, text can be read a number of ways. So I don't think the student actually uh, intended to offend his classmate. Uh, and I think he was trying to be sarcastic or funny even, and uh, the tone was not apparent. And so one of the things that, that I think is very important as an instructor, we assume students understand tone because they live in, the, in digital worlds, but they, they still don't always understand it. So I actually tell my students, if you have any question whatsoever that what you're saying, you're trying to be funny, might offend somebody else, use an emoticon. They're there, they're available in Blackboard, um, or, or just be very explicit, you know, in parentheses, I mean this to be funny, <laughs> you know. Um, so, and don't say any, you know, I have a, a list of etiquette that I give to them, and included in that is don't, don't say anything to someone online that you wouldn't feel comfortable saying to them face to face. Um, and I think that's a good check to read your post back very carefully to make sure to listen for your own tone. Um, and then not to jump to conclusions as well when, when you think somebody has said something that you think is being read as offensive or angry or, or um, you know, just inappropriate that you double check and ask the student, did you mean it? Am I hearing you? Right? Um, and then uh, make sure that the students know what their course of action should be instead of blowing up then in response to the other student and creating a larger problem. How can they contact the professor? How should they approach it at that point? So those are all in my course overview.